W O C A. Ocala. Five minutes after 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. How do I begin with this next uh, interview? I, I was wanting to use something that I remembered from one of those uh, History Channel shows or something like that. Maybe it was a Discovery Channel show. But w- what it was was an archaeological dig. And they were, f- they were talking about a civilization that they were finding evidence of. And they were finding pieces of artwork, pieces of pottery or whatever, anything that might be considered artwork. And the the narrator was saying that typically the civilizations that were the most advanced were also the ones that had the most art going on in their civilizations. And and if you think about, we have a a friend who uh, lives in Germany who uh, lived in East Germany before East Germany, before they did away with that whole thing, yes. right? Mm-hmm. Sorry, where's your microphone? There you are. There you are. Now I can hear you. <laughs> so anyway, anyway, she has told us these amazing stories of how life changed so dramatically for her after they tore down the wall. Uh, an example was as she was riding a bicycle. Uh, she had all, well, she had two or three children. Two children. Two children. She used to ride the children on her bicycle to their separate schools mm-hmm. and then ride herself to the factory yeah. and then work 12 hours and then go to the two children's schools and get them and then go back. Never had a car, right? Mm-hmm. It took like 12 years to get a car, right? Yeah. And she mentioned something about art because she's an artist. Mm-hmm. She couldn't do her art for some reason. Maybe she just didn't have enough time. Yeah. But she's what they call it, encaustic. Yes. She works in uh, wax. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, and, but anyway, when the wall came down and she was now not only able to do her art, but able to see what life was like on the other side of the wall, she was amazed at how much art was in West Germany. Yeah. And now we would assume, since it's been a few years now since that wall came down, that maybe that's helped as well. Uh, that's spread as well. It's an interesting thing. Uh, and our next guest has a very interesting topic. It is called, Heal- uh, this is a book called Healing with the Arts. Um, it is written by our guest, Mary Rockwood Lane. She's a registered nurse, and I believe she's up in Gainesville, as a matter of fact. Yep. And she wrote the book with Michael Samuels, who is not on the phone. This is a 12 week program to heal yourself and your community and with what do you think art and art has many forms it could be music uh it can be paintings it can be so many things let's say hello to mary rockward lane good morning mary good morning how are you very good thank you on the show thank you oh thank you for being on the show and you are in gainesville am i right i'm in gainesville florida you should have come down we got a we got a nice studio here and i know we got a grasshopper on the window (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and it's in the mall, so it's a lot of fun. <laughs> you know, art That's is an great. interesting thing. I, I, we, we immediately think of paintings and sculptures, right? Right. Um, but what else is it? It's, it's music, it's dance, right? It's music, it's dance, it's anything that someone wants to reconnect with, their artist within. And that artist could be a gardener. Someone who loves to write poetry, right. someone who can loves cooking, loves creating healing and beautiful acidic spaces in their homes. There's just many ways you can express the artist within. Now, as a nurse, um, have you literally seen people uh, whose lives have been enhanced or maybe whose health has been enhanced by art? Yes. Oh, definitely. I started the arts and medicine program at Shands Hospital at the University of Florida as early as 1991. And in the very beginning, I invited community artists to come into the hospital to invite patients and families to make art. It was phenomenal. Wow. What did you witness? Well, for example, a patient in the bone marrow transplant unit, there was a young man who who loved, loved music. And he was going through a very life-challenging experience, and it really made an incredible difference for him to bring in his guitar and make his music while he was doing this treatment. It made all the difference in his care. Oh, wow. And did you enjoy the music as well? Yeah, and he did it. What I also discovered is that when people rediscovered something they were passionate about when they were in the hospital, whether it was painting, dancing, whatever it was, or just beginning to start making visual arts, 
it was a powerful experience in which they became so absorbed, and many times it decreased a lot of their pain, their symptoms, and also made their whole experience of being the healing journey tremendously more powerful and more effective. So was it an accidental discovery for you, or did you know this intuitively? Are you an artist yourself? I actually discovered it in my own personal life where I was going through an illness and I was very, very sick. And a friend of mine who was an artist invited me to her studio and said, Mary, just start making art. So I started making paintings I had never painted before and I loved it. I loved the colors, I loved the textures, I loved the shapes. Suddenly I became absorbed in this whole experience of making art. Mm. And without realizing it, I went through this experience of making these portraits and drawings and paintings. And when I realized six months later, I had totally changed my life, my personal experience of myself, my relationship to my illness. I felt incredibly better, and I realized I was healed. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. And you, de- you definitely attribute it to the art, huh? Oh, totally. Now, now let me ask you this. Does, does the, he- the healing power of art, if I can kind of stretch it to that point, or maybe I'm not stretching at all, but does the healing ability of art, let me put it that way, mm-hmm. only happen if you're creating it, or could it happen if you were appreciating it? I think it can happen either way. What happens when you are making art or even appreciating art, you are engaging in activating your healing physiology where the endorphins and your hormones and you go to this place of pleasure, excitement, joy, creativity. These experiences that come through this kind of appreciation of engaging in arts or even appreciating arts We cannot underestimate how incredibly powerful this is. And one of the nice things about Shans is that you don't keep the art private. I've been in Shans before, and I have seen like a uh, um, mini art gallery or uh, or an art show of the paintings and the different kinds of artworks done by the patients and staff there. Exactly. We have tile walls. We have tiles on the ceiling. We have patient's art that has been installed. We have people who made sculptures as part of their own journey with their own healings that they ended up putting in healing gardens. It ended up becoming a community. It created a community and it created a whole change, not only in patients' experience of their personal healing process, but also healing the community of the hospital itself. You know, if if you, we just had a, a a band here about an hour ago or so, and I asked them what makes for a good show, and it's mm. it's really their their answer is not unusual when you ask musicians. They will always say it's the audience. The audience is always important. They got to get that feedback, and and that's a better show. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But but an artist in the and and those guys are artists as much as anybody else is. Any mu- exactly. an, any musician is. But the difference I'm wondering about is with visual art because you're not typically as the artist exposed to the audience reaction uh you if i go to the appleton museum for example here in ocala i look at a painting and i said wow that's amazing well the artist doesn't even hear me right right (laughs) well you know the first when the artist makes art one of the most important reflections of the art is the actual person who created the art themselves they experience it and inside when you use this book healing with the arts it is a guidebook that helps someone begin to explore how to create a relationship between the artist that they are and the healer that resides within them and it also allows them to be create a relationship with themselves that they are the audience of their own life well, it seems that you are um, helping them create a legacy 
of their inner being. Part of your bio says that you're a researcher in conscious dying and conscious living. Yeah. And creating yeah. a legacy for the people you love just seems to be so powerful and so necessary. It's so powerful, and it can be so simple. I remember one of the most powerful stories was this young woman in the bone marrow transplant unit. She had a little four-year-old boy who w would, would um, play with the vacuum cleaner all the time, and she ended up painting this T-shirt that had the vacuum cleaner, which was his toy. In the last 24 hours of her life, that was the gift that she left her child. And it was such an unbelievably powerful process, but it seemed so simple to leave something for her child that she did in the last days of her life. It can be so healing that someone can have a treasure hmm. in leaving and sharing their art. Uh, the book is called Healing with the Arts, and uh, I'm fascinated with the, the premise of the book, the idea that you actually give us... Uh, some steps that we can take to heal ourselves and the bigger picture, the community. Uh, and, the, and the book kind of takes you by the hand and does that. The um, chapter 10, week 10 rather, experiencing okay. sacred sexuality. <laughs> Sorry, yes. I, I had to go there. Just, yes. <laughs> you know, it's just part of my being. It's, it's part, you know what, you know who John Mellencamp is, the John Cougar Mellencamp? Does anybody remember him? Oh, I do. Do you remember him, Mary? John Cougar. <laughs> oh, you do. Okay, okay. <laughs> Okay, Do you, I, I heard an interview with him. This is what he said. He said, other, other songwriters write from the heart. I write from between the legs. I thought, oh, man. <laughs> that's oh, honest. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but, but, I mean, that's probably not so unusual. I mean, how many paintings are very sexual in nature, or at least sexy? If well, if you think about your creative work, you know, many times it brings in your sexuality as a peak experience of emotional, physical, and spiritual ecstasy, literally. That when you celebrate your creativity, you, already, you are tapping in with your sexual self. And part of this, this particular chapter is sexuality is something that we hide from, and we it's many times... It, we don't really create a, a relationship that can be very authentic and expressive. Yeah, and in this particular chapter, it talks about how your sexual experience can be a beautiful art form. And there's, there's, sexual, there's beauty and creativity in the expression of your sexuality. Now, do, you, do you think, as Americans, we would do that differently than other countries, Europe, Asia, do you think they, because it seems like we're a little more prude about that subject than the other countries. I think many people feel more inhibited about their sexuality in our culture because it's, our culture exhibits, exhibits it in a very extreme way when in many cultures the sexuality is just part of everyday life and people are the, it's normal to have sexual feelings. And the art in many other cultures sh expresses the sexuality more, more honestly and openly than our culture. And in the um, spiritual realm, even though people sometimes don't want to admit it, the different cultures are brought together that way also. I mean, people might be at odds. Well, one person might believe one way, one person might believe another way, but if you've got a, a gathering of art from artists all over the world and they believe different things, people are there to appreciate the art and don't let the politicalness get in the way. Exactly. Do you know one of the things I wanted to bring into this is the graffiti on the subways in New York City. Uh, mm -hmm. when, when Ed Koch was the mayor of New York City, he had um, almost given those, uh, I, I guess they were actually criminals. If you're painting on the subway, then you're committing a crime. And he decided to change that. He actually gave it his blessing. And, and two things happened when he did that. Um, one of the things was that the graffiti started becoming more elaborate. The kids, the kids who were down in the sub, I don't know how they get down there. Well, I mean, the, the trains are always moving. I've never understood how this works, but, 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 but the graffiti started becoming this very elaborate stuff. And the other thing is that the crime rate went down. 
Mm-hmm. And and the, exactly. those those who studied it said that's exactly was there was a direct connection. Now they've gone back since mayor the mayor Koch is no longer the mayor. They went back to the old you know you can't be painting on the subways anymore. Uh, and and I guess I'm I'm not saying you should be painting on subways, but I'm I guess what I'm pointing out is that when uh, there's a blessing given to an art form. I don't know. It, it, right. seemed, it seemed to be. Th- it, it's, it seemed to be supporting what you're trying to say about the community exactly. part. Exactly. It's yeah. like all of New York has underground artists everywhere. They are bursting out at the seams to express their creativity, and in a way, they're using these mural paintings and these in these images. They are expressing who they are instead of being pent up, and expressing it through crime or being identified as criminals and what they do in their expressive nature is criminal. And I believe that so many people can really deal with the issues in their life, the loneliness, isolation, through sharing their art. Because the art creates a community. All over New York, those kids went out there and they were painting murals. Not only were the kids, the people painting murals, creating community, but the art itself created a community. And this, yeah, th- right. this is very evident in the city of Gainesville itself. I mean, how many years did those little moles stay on the uh, wall of 441 right before Shands? And then they right. were um, covered up with something else uh, going on the other major thoroughfares within the city of Gainesville. You've got murals all over the place and they're tastefully exactly. done and people must have had must have been able to release whatever it was that they needed to release at the time to do such magnificent artwork and there was a time in our culture in ancient times where the artist was the the artist they weren't all these highly trained highly specialized highly expert artists where people trained for years and years The art that was expressed was more of a community expression where dancing was, many people were dancing, not just a few people were identified as dancing, but there would be lots of people in a community that would come together and dance for festivals and dance at weddings. And there was a lot of people who participated it. And then there were singers and then there was artists. And this is what made people express themselves in their community and it re- actually brought people together there was this tremendous sense of joy celebration you know people express their sorrow their pain their frustrations they express their happiness their cell ce- all the celebrations so it was all like everybody was an artist and everybody was honored for the expression that they have and one thing i've noticed when people come together and make art and it's truly the expression of who they truly are. There is this, I am awestruck by the depth of the sensitivity and the truth that someone shares in their art when they make art as a way of healing. Hmm. It is so deep and so powerful, and everyone can do this. Everyone can do this. It's not something that's just for people who are trained as artists. Everyone is an artist. Everyone can sing. And when you have pain in your heart, sometimes just sitting on the porch and singing your pain, releasing it, it's like a siren is speaking. It's like it's beautiful. And we don't give ourselves permission to do this. Are you all totally healed now, or do you have times when you need to have emotional healing? Oh, I've gone through, I always have my art. I, when I went through that experience at that time, it healed me for what I was going through at my life in that time. Since that time, I spent one year, I was very, very sad. It was the time my mother was passing away, and many people in my life were dying. Oh. What I ended up doing is I ended up, I fell in love with this poet named Rumi. So I'd wake up every morning and, and read Rumi, and I would write poetry every day. Oh, I wow. wrote three beautiful journals of poetry. And it was like so, I was amazed. I mean, the other thing that's amazing is when people engage in their creativity, I promise them, you will be amazed at the manifestation of beauty that emerges from within you. 
Do you think comedy is an art form? Oh, definitely. It's one of the best art forms. <laughs> so there you go. Because every time I try to do poetry, I always start with something about Nantucket. And everybody always, yeah, I get that same reaction every single time. I went to, I went to, a, po I went to a poetry seminar, and everybody said, okay, I wasn't supposed to be. That was an accident. And, and everybody said, all right, now everybody get a piece of paper, write a poem. So I said, oh, man, i got to write a poem. So all I could think of was something about Nantucket, you know? <laughs> Yeah. Love it. Uh, sometimes well, that does, that, there's your poet. Your poet <laughs> is standing in Nantucket, experiencing the beauty, and suddenly your spirit starts to make a poem. <laughs> uh, sometimes people are very good at more than one venue of creativity, and mm -hmm. then other people sometimes feel threatened by that for some reason so how can everybody learn to live harmoniously with each other because everybody has something to offer and the person that has more than one talent they shouldn't feel guilty about expressing all their talents exactly well the great thing about this book healing with the arts it's a 12-week program that really allows someone to explore many different mediums and allows someone who has a talent in, in one particular place, like let's say they're a musician, they can go through the book and explore what it means to do their, what their experience like is do their visual arts. Do you know, you know who I think could really, I mean, everybody could benefit from the book, but you know who I'm picturing? Because we have a lot of um, like assisted living facilities in our community. Right. Every, right. every activities director should get this book. Yeah. Oh, that's a fantastic idea. Wow, you're beautiful. I just looked at the back of the book. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you're a pretty lady. Okay, so, sorry, I, got, I get distracted by you. <laughs> yes, sweet. He's writing a poem. Are, are you, the once, the once a was poem. a lady named Mary. She came on to talk to me. I'm Larry. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. I said to myself, yes, this book will sell. What else is there in there? So, Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody. I said Merry. Uh, um, do, so, you know, I, I, so I'm honestly, <laughs> so I, I guess what I'm trying to say is, you know, if you have like an assisted living facility where you're in charge of getting the people to do things that make their lives oh, more yeah. vibrant, mm -hmm. then the book would be a good, you know, maybe you've already got the skills to know what you should be doing, but I think this will maybe jumpstart you some some days. Well, what this does is it creates a week-to-week -week program as a guidebook. It has many wonderful exercises and activities, and it really also is a great resource for the people in your community to begin to create their own little healing arts communities. So it's a wonderful resource. Um, I have a copy of the book. It's called Healing with the Arts. It's a nice book, nicely bound, and uh, I would like to give it away. So if I have a listener who would like it, just uh -huh. give me a call. I'll give it away. But the rest of us have to go buy it. Mary, how do we do that? Do you have a website? Yes, I have a website that's called WW Healing with the Arts, which also has videos and um, all kinds of things on the website that allows people to sort of jump start. And you can order it on Amazon. All right, and it's published by Simon & Schuster, so you can probably go to their website as yeah. well. Um, exactly. All right, so what is yours again, your website, www? It's, it's Healing with the Arts, www.healingwiththearts. And also I have my personal website if people wanted to sort of communicate with me personally. I all am right. local in the area, so I'm more than willing to connect with people. They can email me, call me. I am very much open to I'm waiting. share my work. <laughs> I'm waiting. She's trying to sell me on the idea of writing a number down. I'm waiting for the number. <laughs> I might need a nurse one day. You'll need a nurse one day. <laughs> <laughs> so what do I do? What do, I do? what do you do? Just email me. It's on my website. Oh, I gotta go. What's your website again? Tell me. It's, well, Healing with the Arts, Healing, and then oh, my website is yeah. Mary Rockwood Lane. There so, you know, it's so easy. Mary Rockford. So you can't miss it. Rockwood. Mary <laughs> Rockwood Lane. Dot com. All right, yes. I'm, all right I'm going like there. The oh, oh, there you are. <laughs> oh, that's yeah, a beautiful you picture of you on your site, too. Is that a painting of you? <laughs> yes. Oh, that's painting a painting. Who did the painting? Mm -hmm. Is that you? Yeah. I mean, yeah, the, that's me. I have all my paintings. But did you do painting. the painting of yourself? 
Yeah, I did. A, I did. That was one of the portraits I did a long time ago. Oh wow! And you made a sunflower out of hands. Yeah. <laughs> right. Isn't that I was that? inspired by my bees. I'm also a beekeeper. I, I do beekeeping and make honey as my, that's one of the arts that I love to do, too. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Fascinating. Really? Good. All right. Yeah. I'm on your website, maryrockwoodlane.com. Mm -hmm. And there's a Ph.D. and an R.N. after your name. <laughs> that's right. right. She earned that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how but did this you? This is a great book. How right? did you and uh, Michael Samuels uh, interact while you were both creating the book? Oh, we, this is our sixth book. Mm -hmm. We wrote a book called Creative Healing when I first started the Arts and Medicine book, it, it, the program in Shands. We worked together when he was the medical director of Art as a Healing Force in California, and I was the director of the Shands Arts and Medicine here. Then I did my dissertation, and I did research on what people's experience was who used art as a way of healing. And I did a study... And that was a very exciting study because it really revealed when people used art as a way of healing, it didn't necessarily cure them of their illness, but it healed them at a deeply essential level. It was almost like a spiritual experience they described as what was healing for them. So I did that research for many years and published a lot. And there's been so much research since that time. Oh, wow. Uh, well, what a, what a pleasure to get to speak to you, Mary. Thank you so much for being on our show, and you're definitely welcome back anytime, but next time, come into the studio. Okay, I'll All right? be there. All right, because <laughs> okay. we're only a hop and a skip away. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you've got a lot of creative forces going on this weekend for homecoming with all the floats and everything that'll be created for the parade there you go that's right i, I know it. a lot of there's a lot of excitement in town which is always fun mary thank you so much for being on the air with us thank you we'll take a little break and we'll be right back <laughs> Thank you so Habitat much. Habitat for Ma Humanity of Marion County is a ministry dedicated to improving lives by providing affordable and decent housing. Help them help others by visiting the Habitat for Humanity Ocala Home Store on Northwest 27th Avenue. To schedule a donation, give them a call and they'll come and pick it up. For more information, visit HabitatOcala.org. Habitat for Humanity of Marion County. Building homes, building hope, building community. On the next Voice of Ocala, it's Trivionator Tuesday with Tom. It's your chance to go up against me, the Trivionator, for great prizes. Golf at Country Club of Silver Spring Shores or at Ocala Municipal Golf Course. Gift cards from Mojo's Grill. And we'll even have Marion County Theater tickets to give away. Plus, there's a round in the water cooler with Buddy Martin, Tom James, myself, and JJ. We're going to ask the question, if Will Muschamp got fired tomorrow, who would Florida hire? And as always, on Tuesday, Angie Lewis stops by. All that and more on the next Voice of Ocala on 1370 AM, 96.3 FM. We're streaming live at WOCA.com. The Soul. So what did you do with your weekend? Me? I was flying. Because I'm taking flying lessons from Ocala Aviation. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, hey, I'd like to give that a shot, but I'm not quite sure. Well, I've got the solution. It's called the Discovery Flight, and that's exactly what it is. It helps you discover the wonder of flying and if it's for you. It's only $99, and it gives you the chance to learn a bit more about the airplane and then actually go for a ride with a flight instructor and take control of the airplane. That's how I got started, and now I'm on my way to being a pilot. Yeah, I know, scary thought, right? But the demand for qualified pilots is stronger than ever. And with the help of Ocala Aviation, you could make a career change and learn to be a commercial pilot. But it all starts with a discovery flight. So stop by the flight school, conveniently located at the Ocala Airport, visit the website at ocalaaviation.com, or call 861-7484. That's 861-7484. Ocala Aviation. Your adventure starts here. Here are today's headlines from The Source, WOCA. The Star Banner is reporting that the Greyhound bus terminal is moving from its current location at the Ocala train station to the Pilot Travel Center off of County Road 326 at the intersection of I-75. The move is effective tomorrow. Today, Greyhound will service both locations to make certain passengers are aware of the transition, according to the article. Greyhound's lease with the city expires on December 31st. The current monthly rent is $1,324 and 34 cents a month. The company sent a letter to the city dated June 25th saying it would not be renewing the lease. 
Florida State Senator Rob Bradley has proposed a law in Tallahassee that would ban smoking on public playgrounds. Parents who were questioned about the proposed ban say they fully support the idea. If the law is passed, it would ban people from smoking in public playgrounds around the state. The penalty for violating the ban would be a fine that would only be applicable if a smoker refused to put out their cigarette or smoke in another area after they were asked to leave. Senator Bradley tried to pass similar legislation last year that would have banned and smoking outside of all public buildings, but that one never made it to a vote. Florida National Guard has found a way to issue full military benefits to same-sex wedded couples and still not violate the state's gay marriage ban. Beginning today, all married military couples, gay and straight, will apply for and receive health, death, and other benefits at federal facilities located within the state. After the U.S. Supreme Court ruled in June that the federal government must recognize legally married same-sex couples, the Pentagon adopted a policy that same-sex spouses of military members are eligible for the same health care, housing, and other benefits enjoyed by opposite-sex spouses. Florida and eight other states announced they would not implement the Pentagon's policy, prompting sharp criticism last week from U.S. Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel. Sunshine State will be a dark place for politics over the next year. Yesterday, just before former Governor Charlie Crist officially announced his bid for his old job, Governor Rick Scott's political committee unveiled its first negative ad attacking his predecessor as untrustworthy. Crist gave more than he got when he took the stage in St. Petersburg, a Republican turned independent turned Democrat. Crist also pointed out that Scott's former hospital company once paid a record $1.7 billion Medicare fraud fine. One day down, 364 more to go for a campaign. Election day is November 4th of 2014. And Darlene Curley and her 16-year-old daughter never got to take a final dip in the Atlantic Ocean at Daytona Beach before heading back to their home in Tennessee this past weekend because they were too busy doing the right thing. As mother and daughter, they were about to enter the water on their last day of vacation here Sunday night behind the Super 